come from Alexandria, Egypt, and I'm currently studying engineering in the faculty of, um, in, in Alexandria University. Well, this is in Alexandria, Egypt. But how did I get here to Amsterdam? Actually, my journey started with more competition and conferences. Each time I visited a new country, explored a new culture, and as a result, was able to better express myself. I was honored by all these travel experiences. They have given me the courage, and as a result, I was able to better express myself. I went all the way around Europe and to Istanbul, to Canada, and to New York, and now in Amsterdam. All of this because of a science project. This project was the reason that I connected with different people from different backgrounds, and I can remember this was my first really big experience in my life. It all started when I was just 16. In all these conferences, I was to talk about the scientific details of my project, but the interesting thing is that most of the audiences were more interested on who brought up this girl. They thought my dad and mom would, were like engineers or scientists, but I, when I replied to this, I would always say they are both commercial graduates. Actually, my mom is currently doing her PhD in political sciences. She had nothing to do with engineering, but this has never stopped her from supporting me. I can remember the first meeting in the Egyptian Petroleum Research Institution. This is the first institution I have ever entered. She came all the way from Alex to Cairo with me, just to support her little girl. And in this meeting, I got accepted to start out my experimental work. My actual research experience started a little bit before that. I was 15 years old when I first heard about science fair competition. It's a competition organized locally for uh, school students from the age of 14 to 18 to work on a research project trying to solve uh, society's problem. And that's when I started searching and uh, observing the daily phenomena that we face every day so as to come up with the idea to solve a big problem. And one day, the idea just popped out. I was standing for at least an hour, waiting for the cab drivers to refuel. And this was the first day that I, heard, I knew what an energy crisis meant. The crisis hit Egypt several times, and most recently, it was two times, two successive times in 2012. This is mainly because of our dependence on non-renewable energy resources. And that's why my project is about sustaining a better future for our energy. The whole idea of my project is to convert the accumulated plastic waste into uh, a source of fuel. And this is through a catalytic cracking process. It's called a catalytic cracking process because we're basically using a catalyst. It's a chemical substance that accelerates the chemical reaction. In my experiment, I was to compare three candidate catalysts for this process. The DHC8 catalyst, the Yzeolite catalyst, and the calcium bentonite catalyst. I put it here in red because the calcium bentonite catalyst was uh, the unique part of my experiment. It was never used in a plastic cracking experiment before. In this process, we generally get two different types of products. Well, that's the gaseous products and the liquid products. The gaseous products were mainly methane, which is the main component of natural gas that we're using today as a main source of energy. And the liquid products were mainly cracked naphtha. Cracked naphtha is just the main feedstock for any gasoline. Gasoline is the car fuel in Egypt and in most of the Middle Eastern countries. So why I am bothering you with all these scientific details? That's actually because they are really important. They have an economic benefit that could reach more than $160 million per year. I made this comparison based on the total amount of plastic waste generated in Egypt in 2011, and I found out that if we are just processing plastic with a typical conventional way of just reusing it to be plastic again, we could only get a, a, an amount of products that has an economical value of $130 million per year. But within a cracking process, we can get an amount of gases and liquid hydrocarbons reaching more than $160 million per year. And let aside this big number, we could also have a sustainable source for tomorrow's energy. And this way we could satisfy the gasoline market demand in Egypt and Middle Eastern countries. This project was the reason that I made it 
for the first time outside Egypt, I went to Finland in the European Union contest for young scientists. That was my first time to travel outside Egypt, and I was among the first Egyptian delegation in this competition. It was really interesting to meet up with people from all, the, all around the world at the, the age of 16. And in one of the breaks in this competition, I met a very interesting Russian guy who asked me, are you married? <laughs> you're wearing a veil, so you're probably married. Isn't this the case in the Middle East? I was really astonished by his question. I was surprised at, but this was the most important part of the competition for me. It changed my goals, it changed my aspirations, because at this moment I realized I am not here just to win an award and go back to my family telling them, oh, your daughter made it. I am here to change the world's view of women and girls in developing country, especially Muslim girls in a scientific community. That was my new goal in this competition. And in this round, I actually won the special donated prize by the European Fusion Development Agreement. And this was like a one-week placement in England. That was my second visit, and after it, I went all to the conferences around Europe and to New York and to Canada. I would have never made it. I would have never made it without the support of my great family. My mom, who is still struggling to do her PhD, and my dad, who is struggling even more to sustain a brighter future for his three daughters. And if I am here to tell you anything, then I'm probably here to tell you, educate your children well, and let them try different things, support their trials and errors, because this is the only way that you could bring the world most creative and inspiring leaders, athletes, scientists, and engineers. This is the only way that you can empower your kids, and then they will do it over and over again with their kids. But who I am to say this? How far did I go? Today, I have an acceptance letter in my dream school. It's University of Guelph in Canada. And I really hope to make it to, to this university and to study environmental engineering there, to link my passion for environmental engineering and to entrepreneurship, and use this knowledge and research and experience to, do, to achieve an even bigger dream. My big dream is to uh, have this sound business plan for a waste management system, a sustainable waste management system in a developing country starting from Egypt. Thank you so much. <laughs>